Hi everyone, Ben Newton here from Macro Connect with a quick tutorial video showing you how to get started with your Code to Compose curriculum. Um, so in this video, we're going to cover some basics, starting with uh, the number one most important thing, downloading and installing the Sonic Pi application. We're then going to move to discussing some of the common interface items that you're going to be uh, interacting with and having your students use as you go throughout this course. Um, also, we're going to do some uh, a quick overview of how to debug and read error messages as they uh, as they come up when you're using the Sonic Pi application. Um, so basically, everything that you're going to need to to get started on the right foot when you're beginning to teach this in front of a group of your students. So let's start simple. The number one most important thing: getting the application on your computer. Um, the application is free. It's open source and uh, pretty much will always be so, uh, to my knowledge. But what you're going to do first up here, you're going to navigate to this website, sonic-pi.net. And I'll blow this up uh, on the screen and show it in the bottom here in a little bit, but that's sonic-pi.net. When you get to this uh, website, these big pink buttons make it easy for you to pick which, uh, which downloader that you're going to use based on your operating system. So I'm using Windows, so if I were downloading a new instance of the application, I would just click this. Um, however, it does work on Mac computers. Uh, Linux operating systems as well as on Raspberry Pis. For those of you who don't know, Raspberry Pis are very small, inexpensive, fairly low-powered computers, but they have a lot of uh, benefits to them, uh, mainly being their low cost. Uh, you can buy one for about 30 bucks. Um, a lot of schools around the country, especially in, uh, in the UK in particular, to my knowledge, um, a lot of schools use this for, you know, inexpensive computing options as well as to uh, to teach Sonic Pi in class uh, as the application is already preloaded on all Raspberry Pis that you can buy. Uh, but for most uh, classrooms here in America, you're probably either going to be working with Windows or Mac devices. Uh, Sonic Pi does not work for Chromebooks. Sorry, I know those are a big thing as well. Um, there's not a tablet version either. Keep that in mind. So um, depending on what you operating system you have, click Windows. It's going to bring you down here. Um, just so you're not confused, there's two options here. You're pretty much 99% of the time going to click Download MSI Installer. This is just your regular uh, installer file. Sonic Pi Portable allows you to uh, to run the program from a flash drive. So there's a few circumstances where that might apply to you. But if you're installing this on your, on your school's um, computer lab or you have a laptop card in your classroom, this is what you're going to want to do. So you click it, wait for it to download. It's only about 140 megabytes. Uh, which is not a very large file. Um, so we wait for this to download. Once it's done, you can just left click on it. I already have this installed. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes, but pretty much like installing any program on Windows, it's going to come up with an option. Um, basically, you come through and just press next through all these options, agree to any terms. I'm going to cancel this now just because I already have this. Um, and then you will successfully have the program installed. So. Opening Sonic Pi. This is important because it's part of the instructions you're going to give to your students, as they, especially in the first two, one or two lessons, as they uh, are learning what the program is called. Um, tip I have, I guess, on Windows computers is just to, if you don't have it as a desktop icon, you can just come to this Windows button down here or press your Windows key and select Sonic Pi. So there's a, usually like Sonic Pi support. There might be some other options here. So just make sure that you have students clicking on the actual pink icon that says Sonic Pi. So when Sonic Pi opens up, um, it usually, if you're on a, a fresh boot, so you've just turned your computer on and you try and open the program, it'll almost always open flawlessly uh, every time. However, if you're in a computer lab, students are signing in and out of their accounts or um, turning off computers, turning them on, that sort of thing. You can occasionally get issues where the, uh, the application sort of hangs right here at this image and Sonic Pi just shows up on the screen and the program never quite opens. So just be aware of this. There are some workarounds um, to note. Um, restarting computers is almost always going to fix this problem. Sometimes uh, having students just log off of their account, depending on how your school is set up, can fix this as well. But if you have students complaining that they can't access the program, just have them restart the computer and it should work fine. So next up, we have the interface. So as you can see here, we're looking at the Sonic Pi interface. Um, there's a couple. Uh, you know, more than a couple buttons here, but I am, for purposes of this course, just going to go over the very most basic elements that you're going to need for your, your first day of instruction here. So this area in the middle is called the code editor. Works just like your favorite word processing software, so think Microsoft Word, uh, Google Docs. You can type in it, 
you can backspace your type. You can enter new lines. See these lines on the side are going up, 1, one through 10 here. Backspace to get rid of them. Um, you can also copy and paste. So I am able to, regardless of what I type here, I can copy this either by hitting copy after I right click or using the hotkeys uh, control C. Then I can paste it either with a right click paste or as you can see here, it says alt, but I use control. You can control V. This is useful and will become more useful as you start learning a little bit about the functionality of composing music in here. So that's the code editor. It's where you and your students are going to be writing all of your music. Um, once your program is written, you must run your program. Um, by pressing run, you are sending instructions through Sonic Pi to your computer to execute whatever commands you have written in here. So um, those commands can also be stopped by hitting stop and uh, just keep that in mind. Works the same as playing a stop button on most other things. Just keep in mind you're not playing a song, you're running a program and that's something to uh, to impart on your students. Um, recording, that's essentially for recording a WAV file of your composition and you'll get to that, it's not important for right now. Saving is saving a text-based file that will save all of the actual written code that you have here and then you can then load that. So if students have individual computers, if you're one-to-one -one and students have a computer assigned to them, this is going to be the absolute best way for them to save their work. They can have a folder on their desktop or on their, their Google Drive, however you have it working. This is the best way to do it. There's a couple different ways, but that's what I recommend. So, um, again, we'll get into some commands here in a second. Just know that this plus button allows you to make the text bigger, minus makes it smaller. The rest of this stuff I wouldn't worry about right now. Uh, it'll become more apparent. The only other area I want to point out is here at the bottom. These are buffers. So you'll notice there's a lot of different code written in here already from what I've been working on. Uh, however, a buffer works just like a tab does in your favorite internet browser. So I'm on buffer zero. Um, however, if I have a project I've been working on in this buffer here, and I, you know, I want to work on something else, or just have a separate area where I can work out a new idea, simply come over to another buffer. Um, you can work on something new over here, a completely new song, or just a new part to your composition that you're working on in buffer zero. Copy and paste it over. Um, it's just an, a different way for you to, to manage your workflow. So, um, our last thing in this video is I'm going to show you something that's very important. Um, now, I know this may look foreign to you as, uh, as we haven't actually done any work with code in Sonic Pi yet, but this error message at the bottom that you're seeing here where it says syntax error, this is something very important to understand as you're teaching this, especially in front of a group of students. So, um, a couple things with a syntax error or any error down here is that um, despite all of the different bits of information that you're seeing here, there is some few most important things. So first and foremost, these buffers that we talked about being like tabs in your internet browser, this will always tell you what buffer the error is occurring in. So this particular bit of code that I'm working on here in buffer four, and then it tells you what line there is an error that needs to be debugged in. So line 10, you can even see there is a pink arrow pointing towards the issue here. Um, here the actual message says no dot digit floating literal anymore, put zero before dot. So that is just a very roundabout way for those of you that don't know anything about this yet. Basically, there just needed to be a space here. So now if you try and run your program again, it'll run through until it encounters another error. So here, as before, we had syntax. Now we have a runtime error. Um, so the, the difference between those uh, is negligible for purposes of teaching this. However, um, it again tells you this is happening on line 17. Now, it even gives me an option here as to how to fix it. So it says undefined method play. Now, it's not necessarily recognizing that I made this a capital P. Instead, it just actually comes down here and gives me a suggestion as to what to fix. So it's on your students to learn the, the proper way to enter commands. So all that would mean is that we put a capital P there instead of a lowercase p. So we can run it again. Now we were able to successfully go through this without any errors showing up on the screen. So um, that does it for the Sonic Pi interface, uh, getting it downloaded on your computer, and also looking at a few of the 
uh, hotkeys and debugging options here in the program. Hope this was helpful. Um, in our next video, we're going to be covering some of the basic commands that you'll be seeing in the first week of the Sonic Pi course. Um, so hope to see you then. Thanks.